I, I, I was I was telling uh, Johnny about uh, some of the things we, uh, we uh, did when we were kids because we didn't have television and computers that, that uh, exist today. We had only radio. So everything that was done to entertain us was was on the radio. And, you know, I, I had my heroes because there was nobody else to have but guys like the Lone Ranger and, and, and Superman and a couple of other and I remember some some of the commercials. So, uh, look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Yes, it's Superman. Strange visitor from another planet, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend steel in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights the never-ending battle for truth, justice, and the American way. Then, there was this guy, a fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger, with his faithful Indian companion Tonto. The daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains fought for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Hail Silver! Away! Oh, stickball. Stickball Stickball was played on the streets of, of New York and just about everybody in, in the cities and, and the boroughs around played stickball. It, it, it consisted of a rubber ball and in those, in those days it was a what we called a, a spalding. It was a spalding ball. We call it a spaldine. And the bats were from the brooms. So a lot of mothers in the household could turn around one day and couldn't find their brooms because the now it was a bat. And on a Sunday morning, it was a nice morning, we'd go down right in the next street where we lived and a game would start. And people would bet on it too. Be maybe about 100 or $200, whatever. And it was just a, a nice thing to do. The street was loaded. The only thing we had to worry about was the cops because the people would complain about the noise. There was a, a, a ramshackle hotel on a corner and, and they, they would complain to the police. So to protect ourselves, what we'd do, we'd give one of the kids maybe $10. We'd put him on a corner and we'd, we'd call him Chicky. It was, if he saw a patrol car coming, it wasn't, it wasn't people walking, it was a, a patrol car. If he saw the patrol car coming, he'd go, we, he'd whistle. And that meant that we got to get rid of the bats as fast as we could. So we threw it on the nearest, the nearest parked car. Now we'd stand there like, oh, dee 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 dee, and then the police car would come and the, and the cop would smile, knowing that the bats were under the car. So he'd come up to us and say, come on, give me the bats. And he'd put them in the back of the cruiser. And then he'd call one of the guys over. And he'd say, listen, I'm going around the corner. Uh, send one of the guys around and I'll give them the bats back. We won't be back for an hour. So that was, the, that was a Sunday morning. We had a great time.